Hello, anybody, and welcome back to Let's Play Rogue Legacy. I'm Mr. Debius, or just Deeb, and in the last episode, we met Johannes and died a couple times as we went throughout the castle to get treasure. And in today's episode, we are gonna hopefully challenge him again. And not die like Sir Grey, the useless assassin, or Lady Blair, the useless dragon. Excuse me there. So as we're gonna head back into there today, it is time for us to cycle through our options and consider what we can use. Alright, so for our first challenge today against Johannes, we are going to be picking a spell sword. Lady Antoinette VI, I know that your family hasn't had the most luck, and you are glaucomic, so it's going to be dark for you, but I believe in you. I think you have a chance. First things first, before I forget, though, let's see if I can't buy any armor. I could buy Imperial Limbs and up that if I wanted to. Well, first things first, I want to get back on this cape, but I can't, so I'm going to need to increase the weight limit on what I can wear. So I'm going to put a couple points into that and fix my cape so it's the right type of cape. You know, I know it doesn't offer as much protection, but I do like the, you know, I'm just going to forget about the double jump if I don't equip it. And that double jump can be very useful in the times ahead. Now, what else do we have to put up that'll be nice and expensive? Death Defy, we'll increase that a couple times so we have a better chance in there. And with our last point, we're going to increase our crit chance even more. So every hit has a crit chance of 24%. That's pretty high. That's really high. But anyway, it is time for us to enter the darkness of the castle because it's just dark and challenge Johannes once again. Hopefully this Descendant will have a little more luck, and who knows, maybe we'll beat the game right here. I know. I know, Johannes. I know. It's actually really sad that your father betrayed you and that the whole countryside went to hell. If anything, I actually feel a little weird that we have to fight you, because, you know, revenge just begets revenge. However, the truth is, you did a bad thing. Your murder does not... You know, it isn't justified, and you knifed us in the back and we died. Johannes has killed Lady Antoinette VI, who has now become useless, despite her valiant efforts. So, looks like it's back into the castle for us. It didn't last long, but did you really expect it to? Because I sure did not. We're not going to be picking the Alzheimer's um, assassin, because Alzheimer's means you don't get a map. And for raiding the whole dungeon, you want a map. You really want a map. We're going to be going with a spell sword that'll hopefully have a little more luck. Sir Scorpio, cool name, with EHS, a nice ability. We only have 356 gold, so you know, we're not going to be seeing much. And our Sky Cape will hopefully see a much better time in this dungeon for Sir Scorpio. And I've said a billion times how the Spell Sword is one of my favorite classes to play as in the game, so hopefully we're not going to be having too much of that, and we're going to have some good times heading into the dungeon, the castle, and all of that. Now, in the last episode, I did outline my plan of, like, fighting Johannes and then trying to clear out the castle and etc, etc, until I felt comfortable fighting Johannes to the death. We're not there yet. But I am going to change how I clear out the castle in a way I described last time, in that I'll be trying to focus on the dungeon first, since the dungeon offers the most payout, and you know, if I'm going to be dying in, say, the forest or somewhere dumb, it won't be worth it as much as if I had gone into the dungeon, because it'll just be a lot more time-friendly to you and to me. That's just the way it is. And thankfully, since we're not a spelunkette or like an assassin or a mage, the spell sword can actually take a hit and not need immediate attention. It is nice to be so fast. I don't think we have ADHD. No, we don't. I kind of wish we did, though. ADHD is really nice to have. And I know that the other one did have ADHD. Like, there was a character who did have ADHD, but it wasn't what I wanted. This is what I wanted. This is what I asked for. And we get ourselves an, uh, another Sharon statue? Yes, we got Calypso's compass. So let's go and seek down our treasure for that. Just as soon as we poke our head in here and play his stupid game. I know we don't have a lot of money right now, but 
you know. Let's just teach ourselves that it's out of the way so we don't gamble later and make a fool of ourselves. Nobody wants to make a fool of themselves. Now I am going down, mostly because I'm just going to go down until I can teleport back up. I'm doing this the wrong way. In a room like this, you want to do basically that. You want to send giant weapons across the field and clear them out. The Chakram, I've said it before, like many things I've repeated throughout this Let's Play, the Chakram is just magnificent in long rooms like this. Because it can just teleport you across. It can just teleport you. Why did I not grab the mana? Well, it's fine. So... Yeah, Chakram's great, because it can clear out a whole room super easily. I did say we were going to go into the dungeon, but we're just going up because the compass is pointing us upward, and the compass treasures are nice. They're very nice. And we are going to be clearing out all the rooms as we go along, because that's just our goal. That's very important. Castle clearing characters tend to have a bit uh, more of an off-hands approach when it comes to dealing with monsters. And by off-hands, I basically mean ranged. And Spellsword is basically the best character for that, in the sense that, you know, you don't have to make a huge effort to actually get near enemies, especially with how much their magic regenerates. Whereas a character like a Barbarian may have a lot of health, and they do have the shout to knock enemies away, but they're more likely to get into physical contact, and therefore more likely to take hits. Whereas in this case, we don't have to do that as much. Once this room is cleared out, I'm going to need to go into the other room onto the right there, because I stepped in there, and I may as well clear it out since I already triggered it. Oy vey. But it's not too long, so it's not a big deal. It's mostly because I can't keep myself from poking my head in other places because I have ADHD in real life. Actually, I don't know if I do. I was never I diagnosed with it. I'm just easily distracted, which I think describes a lot of people. You know? So I don't think I really have any claim to being ADHD because I know that people who actually have it, it's much more difficult for them. And I don't know if I'm quite so bad with my attention, retention, or er, attention retention? Yeah, I guess that's what it is. However, it doesn't stop me from wandering off as much as I do. Like, how did I end up over here? I am fully aware that I have gone more or less the entirely wrong way, and I'm still over here. I don't, I don't get my own logic sometimes, but the door is right there and I want to poke my head in, but no. You gotta tell yourself, no, I'm not going in there. I am going in here, however, because I had a feeling it would be a dead end. So much for doing the dungeon first, huh? Well, you can't trust Mr. Devious sometimes when it comes to planning, because he likes to change his mind. So it goes. So it goes. We do have a mini-boss in here, however, and those are always fun to fight. Where's the other one? Here he is. Oh my god, that's a lot of fireballs. Okay. That's one dead. And if we could not get knocked away, that would be great. That's taken care of. And we get more treasure. Which, as it is, is a pretty nice reward at this point. Stat upgrades are nice, but the money is always welcome. Especially when the mini-bosses are not that tough in the castle. They are really easy. There's no denying this fact. And hopefully we're gonna get a path upward into the Maya soon because, I mean, come on, this is getting ridiculous. And by ridiculous, I'm, I'm talking about like just having to walk around the left area so much and not finding any way around it otherwise. Or like not finding any way up into the north. I don't think we've seen this kind of puzzle yet, quote-unquote, because it's more of just like a platforming challenge where it's all about your patience and walking through without rushing. And believe me, rushing is easy to do in Rogue Legacy. 
when you go from zero to max speed at the touch of a thing, there's like no acceleration, which I do think is one of Rogue Legacy's few weaknesses, is that there's very little control over how much you can move yourself like horizontally. Maybe that might be my dead zone, or but it just, it just, I don't think it is. I don't think it's the dead zone. Because you go from zero to a hundred, just with the tap of a stick, and you need to learn how to take advantage of that. It's not like Mario, where a big part of Mario is building up and controlling your own momentum. It's just not. I'm just getting the food over here, and now I'm going to be going back into here and taking care of these dudes. I really should be using my magic a lot more than I have been using it. Well, that's me. Well, it's time to use the old room clearing blades trick. And did that take care of most of the enemies here? I do believe it did, but let's just double check to make sure. Well, it didn't take care of this dude. But now it's dead. Looks like there weren't even all that enemies all that many enemies in here to begin with. Strangely enough, this room is a dead end. So we're going to clear it out. Really, I should have just... Look. Use your own strategy, Mr. Devious, or just Deeb. Don't just talk about your strategies. Actually use them. And prove to the people watching, to the nice people watching, that they're actually valid techniques. And that they are very helpful in a full castle clear. Or when you go for that kind of run. Just a halt garden here. No big deal. The nice thing about the chakram is it seems to not worry about which... Or the nice thing about magic in general is it doesn't seem to care about the Hulk Guard's shield. Maybe I'm crazy, but that's just the way it, it seems to work. Also, even though we're not a Hokage, our damage is really doing really well thanks to our high critical hit rate. And we are really close to the... Uh, where the, wherever the compass is taking us, as you can see. Now let's send this over there and see what we can't hit. And we hit a lot of things. Oh, there's a box down there. Look at you. And it looks like we already passed over the uh, compass's treasure in the room below. I'm just gonna poke my head up here real quick. And see, we got a couple more mini bosses, so it was worth it to pop our head in. Ah, that hurt. But it's no big deal. The mages are dead and we get their money, we get their spoils, good times to be had. I don't feel too bad about coming out of the way to do the Maya first, as I have been doing when I said I was going to do the dungeon first, because it's the Maya, and the Maya still offers us a, a, a fun challenge and reasonable amounts of money for said challenge. So it's still worth our time, more than the forest in the castle area itself. That's for sure. Nice try, puppy, but I've got, I've caught on to you a lot more than I did before. Where is this secret room? There it is, it was just in the wall. And for our trouble, we get ourselves a couple of chests with a couple of blueprints. I think that might complete the Retribution set. Not that we're gonna wear the Retribution set, not that I really have a problem with it, but it doesn't really fit my playstyle. I don't know if I said it specifically in these words, but usually I don't play playstyles that revolve around me getting hit. Because I think that would encourage a more lazy playstyle on my part, where I just kind of let myself tank hits. And I know that's the point of the Barbarian, is that it lets you tank hits, or any high HP build. But that's more of a security thing, and I guess you could argue that the Retribution is also kind of a security thing, so... Actually, I don't really have a counterpoint against that, so I guess I just kind of beat myself in my own argument. <laughs> How about that? You ever do that? Do you ever just talk yourself in circles until you realize that the initial point that you were arguing for didn't even make any sense on your own terms? In the meantime, we got strength up. So that's nice. And our time in the Maya is proving to be quite profitable, if I do say so myself. And thankfully, the Spell Sword is making quick work of most of these challenges. Even in rooms like this, 
since most of your motion is going to be horizontal, the Chakram is super duper useful. Where is this going though? This is a very tall tower. I've actually wondered if the Maya, like certain areas, are predisposed to generate in a certain way. Like if the Maya is more likely to generate its, um, its rooms in a vertical orientation than, say, the castle, which is more predisposed to be in a horizontal or like widespread shape, and so on and so forth. It's just something I'm curious about. Let's get ourselves back some mana on these fools. Sadly, however, we can't get the treasure in there because we are too big. We cannot get the money. And that is the real tragedy in all of this. So why am I even in here? If we can't even get the money. I mean, we could get some money, but... It's, it's painful to have to say goodbye to money because you're just not short enough. Short people privilege, shake fist. Eh, at least the descent is easy enough. So far, though, the Maya has been pretty, you know, hasn't been too bad. And that's not too surprising, considering everything. Why did I walk right into that? It's fine. Everything is fine. I just took, like, a lot of damage, but it's okay. Everything's fine. We're almost done, the Maya. Maybe. Unless there's, like, a million more rooms I haven't accounted for. Hmm. This is an interesting conundrum. And taken care of. It's a good thing that the giant weapons have so much, sort of, such a big hitbox. Because otherwise I could have actually been in a bit of trouble there. In the meantime, we'll do ourselves a lot of damage to the enemies that we're challenging. And... Ow, oh, we deserve that. Okay. I know that there is a worgen down here. And it's dead. Poor Pupper had never had a chance. And... The Plankies are annoying to fight because of their diagonal shots, in case that wasn't obvious enough. Like, their tier 1 version that only shoots um, in vertical and horizontal uh, shots, they're easy to deal with. But the diagonal ones, nah. They're much more challenging. No surprise, but still. And there are just a lot of plankies in here. Like, a lot, a lot. Well, this is what our magic is for. This is what it's worth using for. And you are just not even worth the time. We are getting tons of money though, as per usual. I was really impressed when we came out of the Herodotus fight with all that much money, but it is an extremely profitable battle, considering all things considered. 33,000 was just, hmm, that's a, that's a nice paycheck. Now what have we still missed so far? Now that we have managed to get back a lot of our mana and HP and all that. We still have a little bit left to go. We still have to go down for one thing. And get ourselves knocked back by the tower guard. Eh, a respectable little chest. Like basically a thousand gold almost. And for you, death. The sentence is death. But the Maya keeps going on and on and on, and I'm impressed by its tenacity. But even so... See, this is why I prefer the Spell Sword over the Archmage, because while the Archmage has a really high MP count, once it runs out, it's pretty hard to refill. If you, if you don't ration out your magic uh, smartly, you're going to have a bad time. But if you don't use your magic at all, you're going to have an even worse time. Because, you know, the Archmage was not meant at all to be used in a melee capacity. Whereas the Spell Sword does have decent attack and decent um, physical abilities and physical attributes. So in general, I would like to pick the Spell Sword almost every time over the Archmage. And that's a fact. 
And here we have our obol, or not an obol, but a shrine that gives us Herodotus's obol. Fantastic. So now we can possibly see the boss that lurks in the alternate universe in the dungeons. For now though, it's time for us to head back down and do what we originally sought to do. Head down into the dungeons, oh boy boy. But it is dangerous down there. Well, rooms like this were made for attacks like this. As you can see right over there, we got a blue bite. Against which, the shock rum is really useful. You just don't want to run out of shock rums. Now there is a version, a tier three version of the blue bite, which I don't think we've seen yet, which is basically even meaner, but we'll deal with it when we deal with it. I meant to press left trigger, but I pressed right trigger. How silly. This is the main danger, I think, with the dungeon area, is that sometimes you, you have to be on guard when you enter every room, because if you're not careful, you'll get blindsided the second you step in. And that, that sucks. But, once you learn the patterns of the enemies, especially since you've already met most of these enemies in some capacity, it's, it's really not as bad as it could be. Why didn't I swing? Slain by an Inpo. Well, we killed a lot of enemies down there, at least. So who gets the next chance to challenge Johannes? We already tried an assassin. Assassin already had their chance. No, we're not gonna do a Hokage. Because we are going to be doing a paladin. A skinny, bald paladin. This is not gonna go well. I can tell you right now, it just ain't. For our money, we'll increase the chance of death defy once, increase the down strike up, and increase our crit chance. Actually, no. We are going to increase our armor a couple times so we actually get more defense, and we haven't been upgrading our health very much. Probably not as much as we should be. We haven't finished the retribution set just quite yet. We still need to get the sword, but we filled up a lot of the potential armor slots, so I'm glad to see that. All right, Johannes. Well, first things first, I'm gonna give Sharon the obol. And since I gave Sharon the obol, I guess I should actually show off the fight, but not right now. First, we challenge, we challenge Johannes again. Look, I'm almost as tall as you when I'm skinny. I understand, Johannes, I really do. But what you did was wrong, bro. And you gotta die for it. Okay, come on. Now, I think the most dangerous thing about Johannes is actually his normal sword swipe because it's so fast and he can hit you with it so suddenly without much warning. Like, it can really catch you off guard. Your best opportunity to hit him is usually when he's in the air and can't really do much about it. I had the shield up. I guess I was facing the wrong way, though. That life didn't last long. Well, that's just the way of the road, way of the road, way of the road. Well, guess what? We're not gonna be a tiny barbarian queen because that's just asking for trouble. We are going to be not any of these characters. Oh my God. Oh my God. Look at these characters. They aren't great. Well, I guess we're gonna be an archmage because we're not being those dragons. Goodness gracious me, this is not going to last very long. Well, at least we'll probably, maybe, possibly get to show off the Herodotus alternate fight. Maybe. We'll see. If nothing else, we're fast. So, that counts for something. And hey, we got the knife and the watch, so we can, we can throw a lot of knives. That's nice. Look at this first room that they threw us into into the castle area. Lots of like alternating fire and enemies. Quite a challenging room considering everything. Now have we done this kind of room yet? I think we have. But you know, it's not too bad. It's all about just 
timing your jumps between the fireballs. That's a reasonable challenge for somebody of our skill. Now, the thing about Johannes, the boss fight there, you may have noticed, like, if you can get hits on him reliably, he doesn't actually have that much health. But he hits you so hard and doesn't leave himself open very often. And that's what makes the fight against him so challenging. At least in my opinion. So what is there left to do then? Hmm. Well, we can do this? No, we can't. We, we don't, we would need like a second sprint. And you can stack sprints, but that's not what we've done, so. We can't take advantage of that tactic, sadly. All right, let's just clear out this floor with our knives. Because our knives are really strong, considering, and they're really, really cheap too, so on an Archmage, knives, really good spell to actually have, especially in combination with like, like we have spells for pretty much every situation. We've got the knife for really long range, we've got the axe for enemies at weird angles, and we got the stopwatch for and, uh, situations that are just kind of a mean old pinch. And we got Sharon's Obel, so if we don't make a ton of money here, we will, we, you know, we can save money. I mean, saving money is nice. I think so, at least. Okay, though, but if we do get the opportunity to get, like, pray for something else, I am gonna do that, because Sharon's Obel is not worth near as much as it used to be at this point. At least, not for where we are right now. Because we've already bought most of the really expensive upgrades. Oh well. I do wonder though if we're gonna get to show off like the last set of armor in the game because it is ridiculously good. And I am going to do a new game plus, so, you know, we'll see how that goes. Alright, take care of the eyeball. Jump down into this room that has nothing in it, and escape. Get ourselves some money, and keep on going down. And with all of our, with all of our time spent heading down, we have finally made it into the land of darkness again. Ouch. Okay. These enemies are stressing me out, so I'm just not gonna even give them a chance to fight against me. Now, you don't want to spam the clock too much because it runs out your MP super fast, but it is good. It's really good if you, like, enter a room and are immediately overwhelmed and just need to buy yourself a little breathing room. For that situation, that's basically what it's great for. Also, the knife is really good in this room, in case you couldn't guess. However... Are there any enemies left in here? No, there aren't. That did clear out the room pretty reliably. And we didn't expect the sudden zomb boner. Just, that's the worst when you're just trying to, you know, walk along and then you just suddenly, bam, zomb boner out of nowhere. That's just, that's the worst thing to deal with. Really is. Also, I'm five years old, but, you know. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Oh boy. Nope. Nope, that was silly. Okay. You give us Hyperion's Ring, so that's gonna be really nice. That's gonna be more valuable than Sharon's Oval, indeed, because we are probably going to die down here. We are probably going to die. But when we do die, we'll get another shot. And that counts for a lot. Oh boy. Like, like, we're taking hits right now. I'm doing wonderfully. I'm so good at this game. But, I, I could do better. Okay, thankfully we do have an easy way through this room and that's just doing that. Max weight load increased. Actually, that's a pretty rare upgrade to get and it's pretty nice and we're just going to, you know, turn that ability off now. Because thankfully, this room has become a great source of income now that the enemies are dead. Throw ourselves some knives. Get ourselves more money. And we, we may have gotten ourselves into trouble here, though. 
we may have unleashed more balls than we can deal with. We may not, we may have been careless. And I may have walked into that plant, but that's what Death Defy is for. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. And now we're dead for real. No, we get a de Death Defy in a row. We get a natural Death Defy. Who would have thought? Okay. 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 So you're a mage down in the dungeons. No health. No health. No magic. I think we're screwed. But I mean, that could happen too, and I could get back some desperately needed mana. You know, sometimes things do work out for your own benefit. And sometimes you could get rooms like that where you just get dumped in unceremoniously to, to die. Well, before we go and... Well, actually, let's just, just kill him. And get ourselves HP increase. Very nice. Now, is there going to be a Zomboner on the other side here to greet us? Yes, there is. Yes, there was. Because, you know, symmetry. I didn't need that one gold. I really didn't. But I wanted it. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go down, get the... And we're dead. We got greedy, and we died. Sir Fleming is dead. But at least he made a lot of money down in the dungeons, and that does count for something. So let me take, check the time. Okay, this episode has gotten pretty long, so I think I'm going to call it there. It's gotten to be about half an hour or so. Yeah, I think that's a good length. I hope you're still enjoying uh, these romps through the castle as we attempt to build up strong enough to take down Johannes, and if not, then I do apologize. So, if you want to see uh, next episode's attempt, then I just hope to see you then. I'm Mr. Debius or just Deeb. Bye bye